Okay, so I'm recording for you guys so that you can watch it back and maybe share it with, um, I don't know, other halves or anybody else who might be interested. And also for those who might be joining on replay. So welcome to those as well. My name is Marion. I am um, a teacher, first and foremost, but I also run Confident Learners, which is a very small, bespoke um, tuition company agency, I suppose, but we specialize in 11 plus. So hopefully you are in the right place if you have come to learn all about the 11 plus. Okay, now, and what that is, uh, what the greatest challenges are um, for us parents and teachers for helping children to navigate these um, these murky waters of the 11 plus, hopefully with success at the end. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about that in a kind of, it is a bit of a talk, and I'm going to share it, share my screen with you just now, but um, we're going to talk big picture, like what is the 11 plus, and then we're going to narrow down and think about, well, is it for you as a as a family, for as a parent, but importantly, for your child, is it the right decision for you? And once you've made that decision, if you decide to go ahead with it, how you can support your child at home with their 11 plus preparation, okay? I will then introduce you to um, our method of teaching and how how after over 20 years of teaching, I've sort of worked out what works and what doesn't with children. And so I'm going to show you that and introduce you to our brand new, as some of you just heard when I was chatting to Nina, we have 11, four, 11 plus courses for year four already and year five, um, but we're introducing a brand new um, collaboration with Atom Learning, which I'll tell you more about. Um, and it's very exciting. So that's what we're up to today. Please chime in with any questions if you'd like to in the chat and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Um, if you, uh, I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, but if you could uh, just let me know, are you all, do you all have children in year four at the moment? Or is it, have you got a different, have you got a child in a different year group? Maybe that would be helpful for me to just to know because. Um, my daughter's well, in year this, three. In year three. Okay, so that's that's great. Um, this will be really helpful four. for planning. Okay, year four. for year and year four. So if you're in year three or year four, that's perfect. Um, year five, um, you'll see why I say that's this in a minute. If you're brand new to the 11 plus and you haven't done any preparation yet, we're getting quite late in the day for year fives. Okay, but I'll explain why in a second. Year four, you're perfect. Year three, you're doing the preparation early, which is also fantastic. Okay, right. Callum's year four and Ashwini is also year four. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go. So this is what we're doing. Now, first of all, what is the 11 plus? Now, just to be absolutely clear about it, it is um, an exam that is highly competitive and challenging, but it is specifically a, a, an exam, an entry test for grammar schools and independent schools. Grammar schools are the, um, the free state funded uh, schools in this country that are selective. Okay, There's only a few of them left. Um, so not all areas of the country have grammar schools, but if you're lucky enough to live near one, they're a fantastic option for education because they're a sort of, let's say a superior education, but still free. The independent schools are um, fee paying, but they are also selective. Okay, now in order being selective means your child has to pass an exam to get into them. Now, what is the exam itself? Now, the, sorry, the 11 plus exam is a sort of blanket term that we all use for all of those exams. So whether that it's for grammar schools or independent schools, um, any entrance exam that a child takes during year six is called an 11 plus just for general parlance, if you like. What it includes, what is tested on those exams is things that are in the curriculum in maths, English, maths and English, let's just go with those two to start with, for what we call key stage two, which is the second part of primary education, the latter half of their primary education. So that's officially year three, four, five, and six. The test tends to include four, five, six, but it also, in my experience, adds a little sprinkling of year seven curriculum. Okay, so skills and concepts that children will not be taught until they're in the later part of year six and the beginning of year seven. Those topics, skills and concepts come up in the exams, okay? That's maths and English. There is also these other two subjects called verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning. Now you've probably come across those before. You've heard of them if you're doing any research on the 11 plus, you've seen these, the names of these subjects sort of 
banded around. The problem is that this is one of the big challenges. Hardly any state schools will be teaching your child verbal and nonverbal reasoning in their school school curriculum. It's not part of the national curriculum. If you're in a private school, then you might be doing some. I've certainly taught it to years three, four and five in preparation for exams in private schools. However, um, unlikely in a state school. Um, so there's one of the biggest challenges is that it covers topics that aren't even taught at school, subjects that aren't even taught at school. OK, and then the timing of the exams brings us to our next biggest challenge, because the exams are early in year six. So you think about your little one now and where they are and think about September of their year six year. That's the grammar school exams. Almost 100 percent of the grammar schools have their exams in September of year six. OK, independent schools a little bit later, November. January, well, October, November, January, some of them. Um, so you've got a little bit more time, but generally speaking, they're at the beginning of year six. And there's the challenge, because as I said, the content of those exams covers the curriculum that they have not yet been taught at the beginning of year six, which seems a little unfair, doesn't it? If it's got year six stuff in it, and even a bit of year seven stuff in it, and these poor kids have not even been taught it yet at school, then obviously there's a bit of a, a gap and, and we as parents and teachers need to fill that gap and do some teaching so that they are at least in a position to answer all the questions on the paper, okay? So that's the big one of the biggest challenges. We've got verbal and nonverbal reasoning, but we've got this timing problem um, and we have to get those, sub, those topics, those skills, those concepts, um, all of that knowledge imparted so that the child at least stands a chance in those exams at the beginning of September, okay? And then the next challenge is the sheer um, volume of people who are applying for these very few places at these selective schools. And that pushes the pass mark up and up and up each year. More people applying, same number of places available at the schools, okay? So that pass mark goes up and up. Now, in terms of what is the pass mark, that's a very difficult question to ask because it there, are, there isn't a set pass mark. You can't say, OK, my child, if you get more than 85 percent, you've got a place. It does not work with that like that with grammar schools. Now, specifically about grammar schools, they are done on a point system. And the number of points you get is um, it's allocated for the four subjects. Usually this is very general. Usually some different schools have different um, entry requirements, but mostly they're, they're all four subjects and they're done on a point system. Now, even if you get the right number of points or above the cutoff for the number of points, so you've, in inverted commas, passed the exam, you still then have to wait to be offered a place at the school of your choice. And you might not get the first short school of your choice, you might get a second school of your choice or, or another one nearby, okay? So it's really important not to sort of talk about pass marks. That number that you get at the end of the exams, um, if your child scores 332, for example, that will be a, an, an amalgamation of all four subjects at different splits, different weightings for those, but they will also take into account your child's age. We call that a standardized age score, okay? so. Your child, if, if your child's born in September and gets the same same raw score, so scores the same percentage in the exam as a child born in August, they will have different point scores at the end of the day. So that it's a bit of a minefield um, and it's something that you will become a lot more sort of confident and knowledgeable about as you go through the process. But that's just to give you the first sort of idea. All right. So generally speaking, the children that are successful and get into these independent or grammar schools are regularly scoring well over 80 percent in their ex in their mock exams right so those are the kind of levels that we need to be aiming for um and they are challenging exams they're not the same as the little tests they're getting at school they're not the same as sats papers they are different they're in a league of their own okay and even if they are getting over 80 percent if you've got 500 children who are sitting that exam 500 of them are getting over 80% because they're sitting their exam. They're, they're, you know, they're bright kids. They've done all the work. 
there's only about 100 places. And this, again, is a huge generalization. But if you imagine 500 applicants for 100 places, your child needs to be in the top 20% of all applicants, not just the top 20% of the kids in the country, but the top 20% of those who apply to grammar school. Now, who can apply to grammar school? The answer is anybody can apply to a grammar school and an independent school, by the way, these are sort of interchangeable terms. So for the, for the sake of this, this presentation, I'm talking about both schools. And when I'm being specific about one or the other, I will be specific about one or the other. So who is it for? Um, it's not everybody has to apply, okay? But anybody can apply, right? Very few will pass, um, but as I will talk about just now, it's about, for me, it's about as an educator, which is what I am, um, a lot of this preparation for the 11 plus is hugely beneficial to any child in education, okay? so. I'll talk to you more about sort of the journey rather than the destination in a minute. But basically, if your child is bright and able currently in your three, four, then or and you know that because you as a parent can see that they're picking things up quickly. They're reading well. Their mental maths is good. But their teacher is saying that they are at or above the expected level for their year group. Then your child may benefit from the 11 plus preparation and may go on to pass that exam. We see there's no guarantees because at the end of the day, you're putting a 10 year old into an exam hall and anything can happen, but we prepare them as well as we possibly can. As teachers and as parents, we, we prepare them for that day as much as we can. But the thing is that they need to be bright and they need to be able because they need to be able to take on a lot more work than they are doing in the classroom at the moment, okay? Um, you probably have seen your child's report might use these sort of very sort of somewhat binary sort of categories to put your child into. So if your child is below expected level or working towards expected level, then I would suggest that they might struggle with the 11 plus, to be completely honest with you. It is a challenge. Now, a challenge is a positive word, in my opinion, but it is a challenge. Um, and therefore, those children who are struggling with the national curriculum, struggling with their normal schoolwork, you might be better to focus on their schoolwork rather than 11 plus work, you see. OK, so if your child is at or above expected level, then you might decide to go ahead with it. But you have to be willing to put in some time and effort. This is not something that happens um, in half an hour a week. OK, it's a little bit more time than that. I'll talk to you about the time commitment and the sort of processes that you can put in place to help your family as you go through it. But it is it is something that you have to put some time aside for and you have to work together with your child and the teacher. If, if, if you're getting a teacher to do the teaching, some parents decide to do the teaching themselves. OK, um, but there, whichever route you go down, there's time and effort. And it helps to have a positive growth mindset. Now, your child may have a positive growth mindset and a desire to better themselves right now. What's important going forward is that you nurture that and you build it up so that they are feeling really good about themselves. Um, and you can do that with language. You can do that with, with your own modeled behavior, all sorts of ways of, that you can do it at home. I'll tell you about that in a sec. OK, um, but as I said, it's not about the 11 plus exam only. OK, it's also about those lifelong benefits that an e excellent education can give your child. And quite a lot of us these days, and I speak to many, many, many parents um, on a daily basis and have done for years. And the, the the education that the children are getting at the moment in school. Some are lucky and are getting fabulous education. OK, some are maybe left to coast, maybe not being um, stretched enough. And they're not receiving homework, there's no, um, and, and there isn't maybe the support that you would like there to be in the classroom. And doing this 11 plus preparation can support that as well, okay, because it gives them that leg up so that they're in a really good place when they get into their secondary schools. Okay, so that's the 11 plus, what it is, that's the big picture, as I said, I'm going to narrow down a little bit more and talk about it sort of and how it applies to you and your family. But before I do that, a little bit about me. Um, so I have been 
a teaching since since the turn of the century, which <laughs> sounds like I'm about 400 years old, but actually it's well over 20 years now, 20, I'm in my 24th year now. So I've been doing it quite a long time. Um, and most of that has been in independent schools, but obviously I did a lot of training and I have done a lot of training in, um, in the state system as well. I was a head of a London prep school, um, which meant that every child that we taught in that school, and there was 50 per year group, they were all doing 11 plus exams. So that's what we did at school. We prepared children for 11 plus exams. So I, I ran a school that did that. And then since I left there, which was shortly before COVID, uh, two years before COVID, I have been running a um, the Confident Learners, which I set up as a tuition um, agency, primarily to boost the confidence of children who are struggling at school. But we have, for the last four years now, been preparing children for 11 plus exams. OK, um, so we do a bit of both and we specialize in these 11 plus exams for both grammar and independent schools. Um, so that's me. Uh, we've got a little team of teachers as well, and um, they're all qualified and they are all experienced. There's no sort of students or um, unqualified teachers at Confident Learners. So we're, we're all very experienced. In fact, one of our main teachers has done 35 years of teaching. So she makes me look like a, a, a beginner. Um, so this is just some happy, happy parents I thought I'd share with you. One happy child down here as well. Um, as you can tell by our name, Confident Learners, we are all about mindset, confidence, and belief in yourself um, as one of our core values. So children enjoy their lessons, they believe in themselves, and they love their learning. Okay, We get children into, into schools all over the country. So um, I am based in Tunbridge Wells myself, so I'm very familiar with the fact this is a hotspot for grammar schools, those of you that know the area the Kent test, et cetera. There's loads of grammar schools around here, but we do work online. So we teach, we teach children all over the country and for all sorts of different schools. Okay, lots of independent schools, lots of grammar schools. So that's me. Um, so back to what I was saying, how to talk to your child about the 11 plus. Now, this is a really important part of it because if you've decided to do this and you know, because you're the grown up in this situation, that this particular school that you want your child to go to is a fantastic school. And you can think about a million reasons why it is and why you want your child to go there, the opportunities, etc. But your child is currently eight, nine years old. And so their entire life is primary school. That's how children work. They don't see the bigger picture. They don't see the future. The future for them is what am I having for tea tonight? Right. They don't understand what's going to happen in the future. And so it's our job as our jobs as, as parents and teachers to talk about that with our children. And particularly if you're going for a selective school, because your child's going to have to do some extra work. And the whole mindset around that is really important. Right. So what I suggest you do is have a good long chat with yourself first. Get a notepad out and ask yourself why you want this for your child. Does your child know why they are studying for this? And do they also want to succeed? Okay, so first of all, why do you want this for your child? This is an important one, right? Your big why might be because you want to give them the best opportunities. What does that mean? Opportunities, right? So it's close by, it's 100 meters down the road. Hmm, not a great reason to go to a school. What about um, one genuine reason I've had from another parent is I was having my hair cut and it was a gentleman. So he said the barber's, I was having my hair cut at the barbers and he said this was a really good school. Is that the reason that you want your child to go to this school? Or have you done the research? Have you looked at the school? Have you seen how what the facilities are like? Have you um, looked at the variety of subjects that they offer? Do they do IB or do they do A-levels? Do they um, have a fantastic drama department? And you know that your little one is mad bonkers about it is a real Thespy and likes getting on stage and doing big presentations and and would love to join a drama department or are they football mad and the football pitches are right there and they 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 have a fantastic team you know there's hundreds of children to choose from and they have a brilliant team it's so much more than just it's a grammar school and it's number one in the league tables and they all get a stars at GCSEs okay so you need to think about what those opportunities are pinpoint them and write them down and have that conversation with your child, okay? 
just to take that a little further, you might also want to think about things like what it's like to be in an environment with other bright, hardworking, ambitious children. So right now, your child is, the fact that you're still here and you haven't gone, oh my God, no, this is not for me, and run a mile, means that you have a bright child, okay? And that you want your child to reach their full potential. But you might be thinking that maybe they're coasting a little bit. They, schools, teachers today, 100% respect for all teachers. So this is not a criticism. This is just the way the system works. There's 30 odd children in that class. They cannot possibly give enough attention to every single child in that class. And if your child is one of the bright ones, they're going to be the ones that are lacking that attention because there's going to be somebody who is struggling, somebody who's got behavioral differences, needs more attention than your child. Okay, so at the moment, they are not achieving their full potential. They're in middle gear and you know that they have potential for more, okay? So you want to put your child into an environment where there are other children that are bright and hardworking and ambitious. So it's not uncool to put your hand up and answer a question, okay? And that happens in these selective schools. Believe me, I've taught in them, okay? It's completely different. The, the children want to do well. They want to work hard. They take pride in their work. They do their homework. Okay. It's, it's, it's a very different environment and you want your child to be with those people. That's one thing that I sort of bring to the table as something new. Um, you also want to talk to your child about the path of education. And as I said, for the moment, future is what they're having for tea tonight. What you need to start talking to them about is what happens after year six. What happens when you get into secondary school? And then what happens... When you're in secondary school, what happens? What are GCSEs? What do they mean? What do GCSEs allow you to do? Get into A, into A level, be, be that sixth form or college or wherever. Then when you do well at sixth form or college and you get into a university, what does that allow you to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? I do this with when I'm doing coaching with children, which I do one-to-one. -one. I start with the future. What do you want to be when you grow up? Then bring it all the way back. Okay, Because every child has got something they want to be. Nine times out of 10, it's a football player. But I try and reframe that and say, okay, not everybody's David Beckham in the world. Let's um, <laughs> let's think about um, a, a job. We actually need to earn money that, that puts food on the table, a house, a roof over our heads, et cetera. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? And then we work backwards as to what you need in order to be able to get there. And then they're like, oh, right, okay. So mum's mum's an accountant. How do I become an accountant? You know, you can you can think like that and have that conversation with your child. So you want them to fly. You want to open the doors, but think about why and then get your child on board with them. Get them involved in the process. Take them to visit the schools if you can, because, again, they are going to want to, you know, they're going to want to go and go to the school down the road because that's where their friends are going. They are not going to be the one that comes out of that school and goes to a different school down the road or the posh school down the road. They don't want to be that person. OK, so you need to bring them on board so that they see that school. They want to go there. All right. Um, and think about your child and all of this. Your child, not a child, your child. What is right for them? And I said this with my head, head hat on um, when I was running a school in London. What was right for you or was right for your next door neighbor or what's right for your parents is not right for your child necessarily. You need to think about them and where they will fit. All right. Similarly, you don't want to put a square peg into a round hole. Okay. You need to be very careful about choosing that school for your child. And then when you're working with your child, praise the effort and not the results because growth mindset is all about effort and the willingness to try, the willingness to make mistakes, all right? The risk takers. Um, and if you praise the effort and not the result, then your already bright child will excel, okay? Um, so what that means is basically don't tell them that everything's brilliant every time. Tell them that parts of it are brilliant, but other parts, maybe we could try and work on this. Okay, let's celebrate the success. Let's also work on this. I've just taught a lesson this morning my child got 95% in an exam that he was doing. He was really disappointed because he was focusing on the 5%. I turned him around and made sure that he was he, he tried really hard. He did brilliantly. Look at everything you've done very, very well. How can we improve? It was just careless errors. Okay. So just think about that as you're as you're as you're praising your child. 
And remember that, and your child needs to know this as well, because this is very important, goes in with confidence. The process and the journey is just about just as, as important, if not more important than the final destination. If you build your young child, they're very, very young still, up to believe that this exam is the be all and the end all of their life and your life and your love and your 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 belief and in them and, and how proud you are totally rides on that exam then they will fight, spend the next two years feeling fairly fairly miserable. And then if they don't actually get into a grammar school or an independent school, they will feel utterly dejected and failures, okay? Which is not what we want at this age. It is, um, it is the way it is. The, the school system is the way it is. It's probably not the way that we would design it if we had to sort of scrap it all and start again now. Um, and we're not any of us in the government, I don't think. I'm certainly not. And so I have no say over what happens in the country's education system. But what we can do is prepare our children for that system. Okay. Um, so it is not failure. The process has set them up for success in the future. Another little anecdote about a child I taught who did pass the Kent test, which is the big exam down here in Kent. She passed it. She got a place at grammar school. She chose not to go to grammar school. She went to the comprehensive down the road. She is top of everything. She is absolutely flying and very, very happy. OK, I think they chose not to go to the grammar school just because it was a long way away from home. All right. So that's as simple as that. So how you can help your child at home. So just to show you where we are, we've done the big picture. We've done the how do you help your child? How do you talk to your child at home? Now you've decided to do it. You've had that conversation with your child and now you are ready to start preparation. OK, now bear in mind, you've got maths, English, verbal reasoning and nonverbal reasoning to cover. All right. Um, and you cannot assume that the school will teach you everything. A, they won't teach you verbal and nonverbal usually. And secondly, they certainly won't be teaching every, you everything in time. Now, go back to that timeline. Those exams that are at the beginning of year six, which means we have to aim to have these children complete the syllabus, the curriculum, by about May or June time, end of, end of May at the latest. So you've got three months of exam preparation because these children aren't born with the ability to sit in an exam room and answer an exam. They need to do exam papers. They need to do um, speed and accuracy as an important part of it. Exam technique is all a very important part of it. So you need to leave those last three months to do exams which means that you've got to finish year six before the end of year five. That's the basics, okay? So don't assume that school will teach you everything. Please ask for professional advice rather than ask um, randoms on the internet because although I'm probably a random on the internet to, to you, to some of you at least, um, I have at least been teaching for a long time. And some people, there's a lot of what I call sort of playground whispers where... Um, my Jimmy's done this and he's getting 95% and we've got this book and I think it's better than that book. Oh, that will panic you and stress you. Please just seek professional advice and go to these two websites. So just jot these down, Exam Papers Plus and Atom Learning, two fantastic websites for information. Yes, Exam Papers Plus will try and sell you exams at, exam papers at an extortionate price. However, they are extremely useful for finding out about schools, like which, is, which are local to you, what, what the... Um, entry requirements are, the websites are, what the local authority websites are, that kind of thing, okay? Um, Atom Learning, I'll tell you more about them in a minute, but for this purpose, they're also brilliant for information. There's blogs on reading, there's blogs on uh, revision techniques, there's information on schools, there's all sorts of information in there. So um, Atom Learning is one of my favorites as well. Just have a mosey around there, look at their resources section as well. They've got lots of free resources. So starting, I've actually just talked about that when I was talking about um, school teaching you in time. But just to touch on when to start, most of you guys are in year four at the moment. Now, now is the perfect time. As I said, we, we do start at the beginning of year four as well, but we are starting a brand new course straight after the Easter holidays. Um, and it is a really good time to start. If you wait until year five, you can do, but what you're doing is your mountain, Mount Everest, we're all going to get to the summit, hopefully at the same time, but you're just making it a bit more of a gentle run up rather than the steep climb, okay? Because we still have to cover the same amount of curriculum and there is a lot. 
in a short amount of time. So if you have a little bit more time, if we start now, basically, right now for year fours, um, you've got a bit more time to do some foundations and to kind of get a bit of a head start on the year five curriculum, because obviously we've got to do year five and year six during year five. OK. Um, and then we help you with this, this exam boards, um, if you work with us. But exam boards are, again, another minefield um, and they're changing all the time. OK, so you need to be absolutely um, sure about which schools you're applying to and therefore which type of exam your child will be sitting. The curriculum will be the same for all of them, which is why we teach all children together, because they all have to learn the same things. But the way the exams are structured, the way the children answer the exams, whether it's a multiple choice question paper, whether it's an online questions, they will vary depending on the school. OK, so you need to be absolutely sure on that. That information can be found at these two websites. OK, again, that's what we help you with in year five. Um, if you're working with it, I do a whole a whole information pack for you on all the schools that you're going to. So you can't miss a thing. And we then um, support children in that specific exam style. Then once you've worked all of that out, you need to create a structured plan for your child. So if you're doing this entirely at home, which you can, um, you need to create a structured plan, which is you get hold of the curriculum, which I am about to share with you in an email later on today for maths and English, um, also verbal and nonverbal. But um, that's that's. I'll send that another time. <laughs> um, but the you need to get hold of the curriculum so you know what you've got to cover and then you've got to create a plan. Now, as a teacher, we do that by basically an enormous wall chart, big chart. How many weeks have we got? How many topics have we got? How much do we need to do in each week? And each topic, you can't just go into a book and say, oh, well, I'm just working through this book. And a lot of parents I speak to say, oh, we're working through a workbook. Right. OK, so, for example practice books this is the eight to nines it's the little ones but you can't just sort of work through the book it'll help but you need structure you need to know right if we start working through the book how long do I have to spend on fractions how long do I have to spend on angles like which which week are we going to learn which thing and you've got to plan that out okay because otherwise you're going to get to the top of Mount Everest too soon or too late and neither are perfect the books I recommend, now um, I do send this out in the email, so don't worry if you don't get these all down, but when you're doing your preparation at home, I recommend what I call teaching books rather than workbooks. Now this is a teaching book. This is a non-verbal teaching book. Can you see that all right? Hopefully you can. There's a couple of chats, let me see. Oops. Sorry, you can see some fractions maybe there. Let me just stop that. I was trying to look at the chat and I ended up can see the fractions worksheet hold on i've just changed the screen by mistake my my error hold on let's just get this back up and running so hopefully you can see this um i can see you this. holding a book if that's what we're meant to ah, see that's great but now i've lost you and i need to get where's the zoom <laughs> hmm. There we go. Right. Return to meeting. There it is. Right. Share screen. I was going to. There we go. So I was just going to share, share with you these books, basically a workbook. Um, this is a, what I call a teaching book because it has an explanation of how to do things, which is the teaching part. And then it has practice questions. If you just get a workbook like. This. OK, this is um, this is a maths workbook, practice book. This is it still calls itself a practice book, but it's it's just a workbook. It's just got questions in it, which is fine if your child can do it. But if you still need to teach your child how to do it, then you need a teaching book as well. OK, so do these ones first and then do these ones. Um, these ones are also better than the 10 minute tests because they they're done by by topic. So if you teach angles, then you do an angles worksheet. OK, CGP are very, very good because they're cheap and they're really good value for money. And there are thousands of books available. So just get the right age group and get the right exam board. So as I said, this one 
is eight to nine year olds. So that's for little ease. Yours are probably, you can start on this, but you need to whiz through it quite quickly and soon be on nine to tens. Year fives then go up to 10 to 11. This is for the GL assessment, okay, which most of you will get. Just get the GL assessment. The CEM one is sort of out of date. The other ones I like are first past the post, which look like this. They've got a little running man on them. That's their logo. And they are great because, um, actually, this is a mental maths one, but this is, they're just, the level they ask is really good. So this is a mental maths one. And then the, um, this is a word problems book, but it has like an in a begin, a begin. So this is, again, by topic. So you're looking for books that do things by topic. So this is measures and reading scales randomly. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. So they've got three different levels of that topic. So year four, you might start with a beginner level. And then when you revisit it in year five, you do the intermediate. And then when you're doing exam prep, you do the advanced. OK. Um, and then Galore Park is also on that list because... Those are the ones we use in the courses just because I've used them in schools endlessly. They look like, so you can get an actual textbook like this, which is brilliant for teaching um, because it's all like, you've got the explanation and it builds up. I won't bore you with the details, but that's, that is very good. And then the workbooks for Galore Park are also pretty good. They look like this, those are practice papers. Um, like this. So the they have specific 11 plus workbooks as well from Galore Park. Um, this is again a non-verbal reasoning one. Again, it teaches you how to do it. So it builds the child up, shows you exactly how to do it, and then um, asks you questions. And then there's assessments throughout it as well. I think there's exam papers at the back as well. Yeah, there are. So that's that's what those are. So those are the best makes. Let's bond. Collins, all very good, but I find them quite expensive for what they are. There's big print, small number of questions, etc. Okay, so that's books. Um, to just to carry on for the DIY section, how to do it yourself. Um, make time and plan ahead. So children thrive with a routine. Yeah, you know that you're a parent. As a teacher, we always write the timetable down in the classroom and if there's a deviation from the norm and they don't get maths first thing on a Tuesday because we've got to do a play practice, then all children, however neurotypical or divergent they are, they will not react well to a change. And at home, that's when you child comes in, throws the bags down, turns on the telly, gets a drink and a biscuit, and then you say, right, come on then, let's do some maths. That doesn't go down very well, okay? You, they need to know that when they get back from school, they're going to get a 20 minute break and then they're going to start on their maths or whatever it is. And you need to factor in this 11 plus preparation as if it was piano lessons or football practice, okay? It's got to be that routine and put aside that time. Do the maths, do the English, do the verbal, do the non-verbal, do the homework, whatever it is, okay? And make sure that your child helps to make sure that they are involved in that planning. So maybe on a Sunday night, you can sit down with them and say, right, what are we doing this week? We've got football on Tuesday, but when we get back from football, should we do half an hour of maths? Great, right, let's factor that in and then stick to it, okay? But make them sort of take ownership of their planning of their work because that helps for children as well. And then make sure that you've got time to, co to cover all those skills before the end of year five. As I said, don't just pick up a book and hope for the best because you might get to August and realize that you've still got half the book to do. Okay, so how do we teach uh, at Confident Learners? Now, I was just going to look at the chat. That's what I was going to do. And that's fine. So Kelly has popped off. Um, so Confident Learners, as I said, we've been teaching for a long time and it's not just about teaching. It is also about the mindset and the environment that you create for your child when they are learning. Okay, so you may, after lockdown fun and online learning and, and, and self homeschooling in lockdown, you may reckon that you can probably teach your child. Okay, which you probably can, although I, of, of course, I would argue that a qualified, experienced expert te teachers might, might be able to do it as well. Um, but the mindset and the environment that I put either side, like the bread around a sandwich, support that teaching. Okay, your child has to be willing to try. They have to be have that confidence because confidence is the root of all success. And they have to be working in an environment they, that they find fun. 
because that builds confidence and they want to come to the lessons, they want to learn. They have to be safe because, of course, they have to be safe. Um, but they also have to be productive. And that involves being in an environment where they where they are not distracted, where they are maybe not totally alone, because that can be fairly distracting in itself and a little bit sort of negative mindset as well. Possibly with a group of small, a small group of like-minded children on the same path. Now, going back to my Everest analogy, climbing Everest, we would never go alone. We would never go without a leader. And uh, we would have much more fun if we did it with people who were at about the same level as us doing the same thing, wouldn't we? OK, so children feel the same. Going back to them currently in their classrooms, they are the bright kid in the class. They're probably rather bored, but they might be one of the only children who are going to go and try and get into one of these schools. Right. They the others might not be. And so they're probably feeling quite alone as it is. This makes them feel like they belong, a little bit of competition, et cetera. So the teaching goes into that as well. And as I said, expert teaching, really beneficial because you've got a lot to get through in a short amount of time. So that needs to be expert teaching. Environment and mindset all come together for success. All right. Now, I talk a lot about mindset. As I said, it's my sort of core value at Confident Learners um, and over 20 odd years of teaching. If a child believes that they can, they will. It's as simple as that. If they believe that they can't, then they won't. You probably heard a child, be it your own child or another child saying, I'm rubbish at maths or I hate reading or um, I can't do it. I can't do my eight times table. How final is that? That's what we call a fixed mindset. That's the opposite of a growth mindset. What we need to turn that around is and say, well, I can't do my eight times table yet. Okay. And I can do some of my eight times table, but I'm still learning some of it as well. Or I just need to practice so I can get better at my eight times table. All right. So that's the mindset. And that's how we, as the teachers in this environment, we, we, that runs through every single lesson. Okay. The environment, our teaching environment, and obviously I've taught in big classrooms as well as small groups online. And I've taught one-to-one -one as well, but the optimal is around eight to 10 children in a group. Um, because there's healthy competition, they feel like they belong, there's a positive energy, there's lots of support and affirmation from the teachers, um, and they don't feel alone, all right? It's really important that any bigger than that, and your child gets lost. So that sort of optimal size is eight to 10 children, we have a maximum of 10, absolute max, we don't go above that, okay? So once we've got those in place, the mindset and the environment, we focus on the education, and education is mindset. That is part of the education, okay? Not telling your child that they're brilliant every single lesson. There is a difference. If they've worked hard, praise the effort. If they've improved on a particular thing, praise that particular thing, okay? Build that confidence and they will, they will achieve their full potential, okay? The firm foundations is making sure, particularly at this level, as you're joining in year four, um, starting off on this journey in year four, you need to make sure that your child has got all the knowledge from previous years so that they can build on that. Now, just to give you an example, in year five, we start teaching um, multiplying fractions, for example. Now you can't teach that until you have learned about adding fractions. And you can't add fractions until you can do equivalent fractions. And you can't do equivalent fractions until you know what a fraction is. So do you see, it all sort of builds up and that's the foundations of the sort of the building blocks. And then we build the acceleration and the application. So we accelerate, we apply the learning, the knowledge, the strategies, the technique to 11 plus exam questions okay, with confidence and speed. So not too much to ask, but they need to be they need to know all of these skills enough, well enough um, to be able to apply them with confidence and speed at exams. All right. So you can see how it's sort of very structured learning so that they're at the right place at exactly the right time. Okay, so that's kind of what we, if I just pop back to this, this is this is what you can take with you um, for your own kind of DIY, if you like, if you want to do it yourself. Um, but as I said, if you would like to know more about the Confident Learners 11 Plus, what I'm calling the 11 Plus Extra course, because this is our 11 plus signature course with a little extra thrown in, which I'm going to tell you about. Very exciting. We are starting a brand new course. 
um, on the 8th of April. So most people, and I know not everybody, but quite a lot of people have two weeks over Easter, one either side, and so are back at school on the 8th. So we're starting on the 8th of April. Um, and our course is specifically for year fours. Okay, and it's, um, we learn with interactive live lessons with expert teachers. So what we do is we take your child in a class, this, there's only one group at the moment, this might change, but at the moment we have um, for this brand new class, we have a maths lesson on Tuesdays at 5.45 and an English lesson on Thursdays at 5.45. So they're separate so that the child isn't doing three hours on a Saturday morning. But there is also an optional Saturday support session, um, which is, I haven't put the time on there actually, but it's at 9.30 for year, four, year fours, um, where children, so they have these lessons. These, these are the sort of compulsory lessons, if you like. Those are where they get the teaching done. Um, they're live, they're interactive, they're with expert teachers. They're on Zoom, but they're very much not like this, where I'm just talking at you. The children are all on their little screens. They're asked questions. Um, they're asking questions. It's all very interactive. Okay. Um, the support session is optional, but it's there every week if you need it for a specific thing. So, for example, if your child comes to us and is they've been learning about percentages um, and you've just seen them do their homework and they're not quite sure, then they can come to a support session for some extra support from a teacher. Okay, That's sort of optional. But those three lessons are available to you every week. And we include nonverbal in our maths lessons and we include verbal reasoning in our English lessons. There's a huge crossover between the two there anyway. OK, so that's that's what we do in our courses. And as I say, we've been doing this for a while now, but this is the first time that we are including Atom Learning in our course. Now, I'm going to tell you about that just now. So our Confident Learner student portal is um, bespoke to us. I've designed it. It's it's you get your own login for it. Every lesson has its own objectives, resources and homework detailed in there. There's extra resources. There's endless videos done by me in lockdown of how to do various bits of maths. There's replays of all lessons as well so that you can um, if you miss a lesson or you have to revise or, or you want to go back and revise a lesson or even parents want to watch the lesson back. The replays are there and it's all safe, secure behind um, a, a, a login. All right. So that's the portal. Those of you that were at the beginning here at the beginning of the class, that's what um, the lovely lady Nina was asking about the homework. She, she wants her son to be able to go on and get the homework from, from that class. OK, so from the from the portal, if you're interested at the end, I'll show you a bit. I can show you behind the scenes in our portal as well. OK, I'm going to do that, but I, I won't do that right now because um, will take up even more time but I can promise you it's all there um but the what we're what we're doing now for this new class is our homework which we obviously set at the moment we set that with worksheets and the the people print and um, children or pet or parents who will, will print off the worksheet do the homework scan it send it back to the teacher get it marked etc so we do that but this time I have been working with Atom Learning um they don't do this with anybody else. OK, this is this is a brand new thing. Um, and it's a sort of Atom classroom, if you like. So what they don't provide in Atom Learning. Atom is a online platform. Um, I'll show you. Hold on. Um, let me just actually let me just finish this bit and then I'll show you. So basically, this is what we this is what we do with your child. We extend and support the necessary uh, when necessary. There's end of topic assessments. But at home, you all you will need to do. So remember the DIY, you need to do the teaching. We do the teaching. All you need to do is reading, learning spellings, vocab, times tables, all of that. OK, that's a sort of home thing. But the actual teaching of the course, that's all done by us. All right. And then your child does homework independently on Atom Learning. That's how it works. All right. So they have their own login. They, they log into this online learning platform. OK, it is the best in the country for 11 plus. It is. I mean, most of you have probably heard of it, to be completely honest, um, but it it is children build knowledge and develop skills through adaptive learning journeys and practice questions alongside the unlimited mock tests for all grammar and independent schools. Now, 
I want to show you what that looks like inside because it's really pretty impressive and I think it'll be interesting for you to see what it looks like. So just to recap, um, it is, if I change screens here, ta -da, you can probably see it, but I might actually just do a new share because then you can see more of it. There we go. Now you can see my whole screen. So um, it is fantastic. And what we, they've set up a classroom, basically, a classroom system on Atom, which means that as a teacher, I can go in, get my little group of year four children, and I can set homework based on exactly what we've been teaching in our lessons, right? We do not use Atom Learning in our lessons. We use it as homework and support which means that you as a parent can log into your child's account and see exactly what they've been set for homework, exactly how they're doing, exactly where their strengths and weaknesses are, and even set them work should you wish to inside Atom Learning. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So this is it from a child's point of view. So this child is called Jason. This is obviously my demo child. Um, so he hasn't actually done very many correct questions yet, but this is what he has. Okay. Now, if we go to, um, let's go to exam prep. So this is what they call a learning journey. So there's different places. This is Volcanic Island, and we're starting with sentence enders. Now, Jason will do his work on sentence enders, and sentence enders, and it will look like this. So he has a question with an answer. Um, I'm going to correct, put in the incorrect one, actually, because you will see then that you get an explanation of the answer with um, a proper explanation. And if you want to watch a video or read a help sheet about it, there is some help available there. Now, if he gets all of those right, there's also a hint sometimes if you're, well, if you're in the question, if he gets all of those right, he moves on to, back to the world, he moves on to the next stage in the learning journey. Now, this little boy might not get all of them right, in which case he will be given more sentence enders so that he improves in his second session. Do you see? So it's adaptive. Um, and he can move through the journeys until he gets to the end, and then he'll go up the next, up to the next one. But again, it gets harder as you go along, depending on how well you do in each one. So that's adaptive. So that's a personal learning journey, which is separate from the homework. Okay. Now, if we go into here for Jason, I can then say to Jason, right, I want to, we have done in maths this week, and I'm talking about maths because I'm a maths teacher, but um, we also obviously cover all the others. In maths this week, we were doing fractions and we did equivalent fractions and we turned mixed numbers into improper fractions. I will then set that work for Jason to do and it'll come up on his dashboard. Okay, and then he'll get 10 questions. He can start it now and he'll get 10 questions on mixed numbers and improper fractions. All right, so that's how that works. We then, as the adults, go back into it and you can see, hold on, let's uh, go back to home. Um, you can log in as a parent as well. So you can you can log in as a parent there. Oh, no, hold on. I want to show you where the... Um, I think I think where they are actually is um, I'll just share the screen with you. Sorry, I'll be with you two ticks. This is I'll share with you this again. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So what that looks like is um, this is George. There's the setting of the um, custom practices. Those are the questions. Now the feedback looks like this. So he will then do his work. He might've had 30 questions to answer, but every time he answers a question, if he gets it right, it goes green. If he gets it wrong, you get an explanation with a, vid a video and a help sheet, okay? 
So that's what the child sees. And then as the parent or the teacher, this is what we can see. Now this child is, this is a, an exam for Henrietta Barnett's school. Okay, They're all very specific to the schools that they're going to, not just four different types of schools. You get a standardized age score, which is what they are based on their age. Obviously that will be different. Um, and then, so we're looking for getting, that's pretty good, 113, but we need to get up to about 120 or more and up to about eight or nine on the stay nine score. This is a verbal reasoning. So you can see that this person has done well with the vocabulary and finding words, but needs to practice reordering. Codes is okay, but could do with some practice. So we can then, as a parent or a teacher, go and set practice for this specific child based on what they have got wrong in that paper, okay? Or in that homework. So this person needs to practice reordering codes and recognizing and, and associating um, letters as well in there, okay? So that's the level of breakdown that you get for every single piece of work they do. So it's instant as well, so you can see it. Now, what we do as tutors is we have the log onto this as well. So we set the whole classwork, um, the same thing based on what, what we've just been doing in the lesson. So we're consolidating what we learned in the lesson, but we are then monitoring your child's progress using Atom Learning. So we will then go, right, okay, so little Jason needs to practice these things. And so we might set him some extra homework on that because he needs to practice it because that showed up as a weakness in his homework, okay? If he's doing well at that particular thing, then we might set him the next level up to do in addition with his extra homework as well. So we're using our time. Instead of sitting there and endlessly marking and scanning and emailing back to you, we are actually monitoring your child's progress on a weekly basis, okay? That's how it works. Is that clear? Um, you'll see, obviously, uh, this is this is a new thing. And it's very exciting. So obviously, I am um, hopefully giving you the all the information, but it's it's something that I am sort of like we are building together with Atom Learning. As I say, I've had men endless meetings with the CEO of, of Atom um, and the assessments coordinator for Atom, who, by the way, write more assessments. She told me this the other week. Um, As Atom write more assessments for schools in this country than GL and I ISEB put together. So they are quickly becoming the company for school assessment writing. Schools ask them to write their assessments for them. All right, so um, what they don't know isn't worth knowing really. So then we do the, the, the we do all of that for homework. So that runs throughout the course, right? And you're obviously gonna get a massive discount on that too. Um, but just to be clear, once we get to the end of year five, we start doing exam preparation and we do cover every single exam board and we make sure that you are preparing for the right exam board. And we do that by communicating with you as to which exams you're going for. But then on Atom, once we get into year five, the package goes up a little bit and we go up to unlimited exam papers. Now, that means that for your subscription, you will get unlimited exam papers in whatever it is, whether they're doing independent school exams. GL exams, particularly if you're going for um, Henrietta Barnett's, for example, they've got Henrietta Barnett exams. And you do those endlessly all through the summer in year five. Okay, If you are going for um, independence, we also support those as well. Okay, So um, it's basically confident learners teaching, real teaching with Atom learning homework and monitoring and assessment, Okay, which is, I think, the best of both worlds. Uh, and pretty trailblazing that's we're we're the first people to be doing it which is great okay so before I leave you because I am aware that I'm taking up your afternoon now I want to get to the investment but before we do um this is how we work our lessons okay they are all um qualified teachers recorded lessons you get some book recommendations if you want to do some book work at home as well because obviously book and computers is a good good mixture um, and our portal is full of information, full of resources and things too, okay? Um, we do have a Facebook group, but it's that's by the by, really. The important stuff is in the portal. Um, lessons, two lessons a week, plus an optional support session. We do include verbal and nonverbal, et cetera. Assessment and homework all set through Atom Learning. Practice papers when the time comes, okay? So we want your child to growing confidence so that they can attack their 11 plus exam papers, basically. That's what we want. But 
that journey, that feels like a long way off right now. So between now and then, we will be providing them with an understanding of the core foundations of maths and English way beyond that which they would learn in the classroom that will last a lifetime. OK, so that they feel positive and excited about learning. And then when they come to take the exam, if they pass, that would be amazing as well. OK, a lot of our children do. We do that through mindset, teaching and the environment. OK, so investment for all of that. Um, just to give you an idea, tutoring is totally unregulated in this country. So you will see tutors advertising for sort of £10 an hour, £5 an hour. I'm going to bet that those tutors have never spent a single second in a classroom because um, qualified and experienced teachers will be charging more than that. OK, probably £40 an hour ish, which at three lessons a week works out as quite, quite pricey just for an average tutor. Once you start getting a, several years of experience under your belt, we at Confident Learners charge from 50 to 70 pounds an hour. OK, um, so that also adds up if you're going to do it one to one with a tutor. But we can provide those fantastic tutors for a fraction of the price because you're learning in that perfect environment. OK, in that small group with regular lessons, lots of support and atom learning. OK, now our Confident Learners lessons by themselves, what we are currently Obviously, our groups that are, don't have Atom Learning, just for the lessons, we have we charge £240 per month. But obviously, we have Atom Learning on top of that because we are merging the two. And Atom is nothing. It's not my company. It's nothing to do with my company. We are using Atom Learning to make our teaching and your child's learning even better. OK, and Atom Learning, this is the price of Atom Learning. OK, so this. This one in the middle is the one that we offer for the year fours because you only get two mock tests a month, um, whereby the exam pet prep plus is the sort of later in year five is when I recommend that for when you're doing lots of, because uh, that's unlimited mock tests. Otherwise, you get exactly the same stuff. Now, they are £60 a month. Um, but if you join us with Confident Learners, we give you a 33% discount, which is huge. Right. So that's £20 saving every single month. So think about that and how that might work out over the next year or two. And so altogether, um, that's just 40 pounds a month, obviously, for those of you doing the maths. So for a third off, so it goes from 60 pounds a month down to 40 pounds a month. So altogether, it's 280 pounds a month. So just think about what you get for that. You get your three lessons a week, plus all of your Atom learning, plus access to your tutor, support from me, exam papers. I've got all the GL papers, for example. Um, structured learning, excellent teaching, all of that is provided. Um, so I think it is huge value for money. Um, and remember that learning is never wasted. And so any investment in learning is never wasted, okay? So, but you have a choice, yeah? Your child, is, is your child up for it? Are they up for the 11 plus? Are you up for it? Okay, are you ready to embrace that challenge? As I said, challenge is a positive word. You need to embrace it and go for it. And you want to give your child the best education available so that big picture GCSEs, A-levels, university, so that they are set up for that next chapter of their education. You can do it yourself, as I've said, but do you feel confident in doing it yourself? Do you know that you're giving your child the very best possibility, the best opportunity okay, of succeeding if you do it yourself? Or would you like the guidance and support and expert teaching of trained, experienced professional teachers? That is your choice okay you can get the very best learning platform in the country for a fraction of the price um, so that your child is learning everything they need to know in the right way at the right time and they are enjoying it and i promise they are enjoying it because our children love our lessons and to add atom learning to it i promise you that well i hope and uh i can tell you that Almost every single child I've taught that I've used Atom Learning, because I've been using it for years with my one-to-one -one tutors, so I, I have used it a lot. They love using it. Okay, Obviously, it's a computer. Tick. They like that. Um, but it's just the way it gives you instant feedback, the way it helps you. Like, if you've made a mistake, it explains why you made a mistake. It gives you really, really fantastic detailed feedback. So parents and children love it. Okay, so there's our... Happy parent little testimonial at the end for you. If you have any questions, 
I would be delighted to answer them now. I understand that I've taken a lot of your time and I am very grateful for your time. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have found it useful. I hope you feel a little bit more knowledgeable about the 11 plus and your next steps. Okay. So with that, I'll just close the share so that you can see me and I can see you properly and ask answer any questions. Ashwini, you have said, asked me a fantastic question. Will you cover creative writing? That is actually something I usually mention. Sorry, I don't speak with any notes. So I just talk um, from the heart, I hope you can see. But yes, very good question. We do teach creative writing. Now, the reason that's a good question is because the GL, which are the most, it's the most common um, grammar school papers, GL do not test at, uh, at creative writing because they are computer marked which means that the child just makes a little mark on the on the paper, on the multiple choice paper, and it's put into a computer and it's marked like that. And they obviously can't mark writing like that. So a lot of a lot of grammar schools do not test creative writing. Some do. Some like the future schools and the um, CEM Select and other little variations do test creative writing. Some also do a first stage and like Henrietta Barnett, for example, does a first stage and then it does a second stage. And if you're invited back for the second stage, you will be tested on creative writing. Almost all independent schools do creative writing um, at some point during their selection process. And it is a very important skill for children to learn and be good at when they get into their secondary schools. So for all those reasons, we do teach creative writing in our lessons. Now, obviously, Atom struggles with that because it's an online platform. So what they do is they provide writing prompts and writing tips and writing hints. And that is all provided for you on the system, but you do the writing in person on paper and we mark it for you like that, okay? So that's how that's how we get around the um, creative writing, but it is quite a big chunk of our English curriculum, okay? All right, anybody else? Thank you, I know I've talked a lot. Pleasure, Ashwini. I hope it answers your question. Um, if you would like to talk to me about your child in particular, because obviously I want it to be the right decision for you. If you'd like to talk to me about your child in particular and go through anything that you're not sure about, I will be very happy to jump on a call with you one to one and talk about your child. OK, pleasure, Callum. I'm glad you found it informative and I hope you feel a little bit more knowledgeable about this um, slightly slight minefield of an education system that we have in this country. So thank you all very much, ladies and gents, and I wish you a lovely afternoon. Take care. I'll send you the recording and all of those goodies I told you about later. All right. Bye-bye.